I had a friend make me watch um, Shane Gillis last night or whatever. I don't like a lot of new comedians or whatever. Apparently, I just get a lot of jokes about like trans people and like that. So I'm just like, okay, it's gonna be cringe. Because um, all of the modern co comedian shit about this is cringe as f uh, He was really funny. Holy sh**. I think it was a... Um, I don't remember what this was. It was Gillis Live in Austin or something. I was getting... <laughs> I was getting PTSD from the... Um, explaining how your parents watch Fox News. <laughs> oh, my God. He watches it every night, like every Fox News dad. My dad watches Fox every night until he can't. <laughs> That's how long they watch. They watch every night until they get so angry they have to go to bed. <laughs> My dad will watch for like two hours, and then out of nowhere he'll just stand up and be like, fucking Mr. Potato Heads, trans, I'm going to bed. My parents do this so much. Just the, the whole, the like, something, it'll be like cutting to commercial, be like, I can't believe it. And then they turn off and go to bed. It's like, this is real life. <laughs> This world's going to hell. <laughs> He's all about it, dude. He loves it. Every once in a while, there's like a commercial for like a commemorative 9-11 gold coin. <laughs> every, every conservative, I guess it's the same on Fox News. I, normally, I'm listening to the talk radio and some of that, but there's always like, it's always, it's always the same commercials. It's always some, wait, what did he just say what this was? Commercial for like a commemorative 9-11. Yeah, yeah. It'll, yeah, it'll be like some commemorative like gold-plated 9-11 quarter collection or like 52 quarter collection of George W. Bush minted by, or like some buy gold insurance or something. It's always some, it's always like the same type of dumb commercials. How'd you get inflation? Buy gold. I'm sorry. I only bring this up because you made me listen to dog shit, Trump shit. I only bring this up because, um, I haven't, I don't, I, my thoughts on this aren't finished, okay? Just started, started last night, still with me this morning, still with me now. I feel like Donald Trump can't say anything that isn't funny. Like, and I'm trying to figure out why this is. Even if it's not funny, I just I feel like anything that Donald Trump's, it's, there's nothing. There's nothing that he can't, say that wouldn't just be funny. I don't know why. I'm, and I'm trying to figure this out. I, apparently there's a show, I never watch any comedian shit ever, and I know like contemporary. There's a show called Kill Tony. Um, <laughs> this is it's so horrible. So uh, I don't even know who this comedian is. Oh, I guess Adam Ray. This? <sighs> Does a Biden impression for the whole thing. And then I guess it like 10 or 15 minutes. The Biden impression is okay. I like the smile he does. It's fucking funny as fuck. I just, what I noticed was as I'm watching this, I'm pretty sure I watched this whole thing last night. I just, I feel like he can say anything as Trump and it's just always funny. Like literally any possible thing Trump can say is just always funny. I don't know why. <laughs> this is a moment we will never forget. This is incredible. <laughs> I don't understand. And I don't understand why. I'm trying to understand. I don't understand it. <laughs> I couldn't. What's your, what's your dad do for work? Uh, he's a banker. Where? I don't know. Somewhere. Is he still working for the banks? I have no idea. You don't talk to him? Yeah, I stopped talking to my dad. When, why did you stop talking to your dad? He's kind of crazy. But wait, why? This show is a huge bully show. Oh, my God. Unless, I guess they sign up for it. They put their name in a hat. Huh? How is he crazy? Did he say, stop working at a fucking <laughs> grocery store? <laughs> stop doing wait. comedy. Get a real job. I'm a millionaire banker, and my son is a retarded anime pussy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It might also just be Shane Gillis. I don't know. But I'm, I'm just thinking about <laughs> I'm just thinking about it in, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know why. I feel like you could say anything or Trump. You know what? Oh, I just realized what I need to do. I need to watch the Alec Baldwin thing because the thing about the Trump comedians is I feel like no matter even if you're making fun of Trump, like it's you can't make fun of Trump because it's always you're always laughing with him, no matter what. But maybe, but people, but Trumpels really hated Alec Baldwin's impersonation. So maybe that's like maybe if I watch that, like oh, this is how people feel for like a mean Trump impersonation or something. They want to join their podcast? Yeah, I told Erida to reach out, so hopefully she did.
I feel like really good comedians, I think would be some of the only people, I don't, I don't think I've ever been intimidated on a show or podcast. Talking about it. I feel like comedians would be, because I, I feel like I'm fairly witty and funny, but like, I guess a professional comedian, what if I look like a retard? Comedians are, good comedians, I think would be somewhat intimidating to me. Um, but no, yeah, obviously I would go on the show if I could. Did we play that Tim uh, Walls? People are saying I'm saying his name wrong. It's Walls and not Waltz. Of him doing the, uh... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know if I play this on stream or not. And I, got... and I gotta tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is, if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So. Oh, no. Oh, see no. What I did there. Oh, jeez. I don't get it. I don't really get it that much either. Apparently, there's a meme that was started on Twitter about uh, J.D. Vance fucking a couch, and now all the conservatives are so fucking angry that people spread that rumor, and it's not true. So I think it's a reference to that. I didn't actually know the origination of the meme right now. Apparently, it's not true, but I just think it's, it's just funny how mad conservatives get mad over so much shit. It's fucking hilarious. They're like, I can't believe fucking people are making up shit. People are making shit up about this. They can just lie, man. Why are they calling us weird? After four years of the most unhinged fucking rhetoric, the most unhinged rhetoric in the fucking universe. Just to review, someone on Twitter made up a story about J.D. Vance having sex on the couch, and another totally made up story is being used on stage by the comedy campaign to mock Vance. This is honestly one of the dirtiest things I've ever seen a presidential campaign do. These people are pure evil. Sorry, fuck, I got triggered. Don't like me, Hibs. Don't like me. Don't like me, tweets. Okay, don't trigger me. Isn't "get off the couch" a common phrase, anyways? Yeah, but he's he's clearly referring to that. That's why they're that's what their joke is about. The thing that I'm already preemptively mad at already, so we have now is that if Trump loses this election and disappears, all of these fucking conservatives are going to be allowed to continue on like nothing ever happened. Like they weren't actually just cheerleading on the craziest fucking guy in the history of the universe. I'm like preemptively triggered over it. Alrighty, so we have now seen the debut of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz on the national stage, and we saw Kamala Harris introduce him. So obviously, very, very high energy event. Kamala Harris is bringing out gigantic crowds. Democrats are, in fact, enthused. They brought out Josh Shapiro for a little bit of a consolation run. He yelled a bit, and his voice broke, and he talked a little bit about being Jewish, which gave Democrats cover to ignore the fact that the explicit reason <laughs> they did not pick him is because he's a Jew. And then... <laughs> what will happen if Trump loses? Will he fade away? No one knows, my dude. We'll see what happens. So she does this routine. These rallies are incredibly well choreographed. I will say that. They are very well choreographed. She calls for a chant, and a chant goes up. First Democratic rally I've seen for a while where, where people start actually cheering USA. And why are they cheering USA? Because she says, what an amazing country this is. What an incredible country where a person like me. Hey, Dustin, I was wondering what your view is on adoption, and do you think it can get better with Kamala? I think it could help uh, our homeless and economy. Are you asking, are those connected or are those separate? Do you think adoption could help with our homeless and economy? Like people should be adopting homeless people? I don't understand what that, if those two things are supposed to be connected or not. First Democratic rally I've seen for a while where, where people start actually cheering USA. And why are they cheering USA? Because she says, what an amazing country this is. What an incredible country where a person like me, middle-class person or Tim Walls, middle-class person can become the president and vice president of the United States. Now, I agree with that. But she doesn't agree with that. She believes that America is systemically racist. So does Tim Walls. Tim Walls said back in 2000. You understand that these things aren't mutually exclusive, right? Like you can think that like, wow, this is a great country. This is so cool that we can do awesome things here. And we have problems and we can work to fix them. Like they're not even mutually exclusive. What? 20, that he believes that those riots were a reflection of the great evil that America represented. And yet here they are doing the unity routine. And that's what is so false about all of this, is this idea that these folks are real reminders of what brings us together, that what they are really interested more than anything else is governing for all Americans. They are radically to the left. 
This is why the Trump campaign has a moral obligation to remind the American people that these people are radically to the left. Okay, so that's all the intro to Tim Walls. Then Tim Walls gets up, and he's quite good. I mean, let's just be frank about this. Tim Walls gives a speech, and the speech is avuncular, and it's charming. He's smiling the whole time. He doesn't look uncomfortable smiling. Oh, no. <laughs> he attacks J.D. Vance. He attacks Donald Trump, of course. The lowest point of the speech is, is his attempt to signal to his base that he'll take the gloves off with J.D. Vance. He makes some sort of dumb joke about J.D. Vance getting up off the couch, which is supposed to be a joke about a meme that was going around the internet. <laughs> That's a dumb joke. Never mind the 50 trillion fucking nicknames and jokes and inappropriate comments and sayings and tweets and everything else from Donald Trump. About a false passage that doesn't exist in Hillbilly Elegy, supposedly J.D. Vance having some sort of sexual relationship with the couch. is really stupid, but it's become a Democrat meme, and now you've got the vice presidential contender who's actually... <clears throat> Is it an American thing to call a woman by her first name, Kamala instead of Harris? In France, it would be insulting. I don't know how to explain this, but in America, it's very much just like a vibe thing. Um, just some people go by their first name and some people go by their last name. I don't know why. I don't know if there's like a pattern to it. It's just like, it's just, we just, we vibe on that a lot. Actually, now I'm wondering if it is... Fuck, I think it actually might be sexist. <laughs> okay, here's my thought, and then I'm not sure. I wonder if, um, I wonder if when you say the last name, it's assumed that the last name is the husband's name, so then you have to say the first name if you're specifying a woman. So for instance, oh, remember Clinton? You mean Hillary? Or Bill Clinton, right? However... I wonder if it's actually just like a vestige of sexism and it's more just whoever is popular first is the one whose name you would use. So I don't think you would usually say Amy. I think you'd say Klobuchar, but it's because nobody knows who her husband is. Or you wouldn't say, um, you wouldn't say Elizabeth. You'd probably say Warren or you'd say Elizabeth Warren because nobody knows who her husband is. But then for Kamala Harris, I don't know why we don't say Harris. Maybe because Harris is a common boring name or something nobody yeah you don't really say nancy you would say either pelosi or nancy pelosi yeah i don't know actually i'm not sure no I'm not, i don't know i'm not sure throwing that out there in public wink not bernie sanders was bernie pete Buttigieg was pete but that's he had a weird thing yeah, i don't know he even stopped and said you can see what i'm doing there and that's the whole idea here. Meanwhile, don't worry, he's bringing Americans together. Now, at no point were the challenges that actually faced the country ever brought up. The challenges, apparently, according to Kamala Harris and, and Tim Walls, the big challenges are that Obamacare might get repealed. If you said Pelosi or Cortez, we'd instantly know who it's about. I disagree with that. If you said Cortez, I don't think any, I think people would think of the fucking Spanish conquistadors or whatever the fuck. If somebody said like, oh, you know Cortez, that politician is crazy. Cortez? You mean Gomez from the Adams family? I think you'd, you would say either AOC or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or you'd say AOC. I don't think you would ever say, I don't, I've never in my life. Oh yeah, people in chat didn't even know I met Cortez. Or, uh, yeah, AOC, yeah, I don't think so. Or you'd say Ocasio-Cortez, but I think you would just say Alexandria, I think you would just say AOC, I think you would just say AOC, yeah. Which is kind of weird, where you're literally using somebody's initials. No mention of the fact the Middle East is on fire, no mention of foreign policy, no mention of exactly why the Biden administration seems to have taken the side of Iran in the Middle East. None of that, of course. No serious dealing with issues. And that is... <laughs> yeah, is that a thing? Are we going to help Iran bomb Israel? Is that okay? Is the theme of this campaign. In the end, that's the theme of this campaign. Ignore everything. Ignore all of the activities of the Biden campaign and the Biden-Harris administration. Ignore all of it. Ignore Tim Walz's tenure as governor. Ignore all of it. They are casting a TV show. And in this TV show... You have the very charming Kamala Harris, who apparently is filled with joy. That's the other thing that we learned here. So you got the words unity and you got a lot of joy. According to Tim Walls, Kamala Harris is not weird. Right? That crazy laughter, the <laughs> that stuff, not weird. That's joy. The weird dancing and the strange motions, that's not weird. That's joy. And if you don't understand that it's joy, it's because you don't understand joy. That, that, okay, so again, all of this is pablum. It's crap. It's insulting crap for people who actually follow politics, but what I fear is the most- Who actually follows politics right now, Ben? 
The sad thing is, is I don't even know from a policy position. I don't even know if I if I'm even that aligned with the uh, with the with the Harris um, Walls campaign. But like we we don't even have a policy. We have no real. We don't have any. We don't have a multipolar policy world in the U.S. right now. It's literally just the Democrats kind of have policy, but they have to fight on these weird sociocultural grounds with conservatives because we have no conservative party right now in the United States. I don't even know. I don't know. I have no idea what the fuck the policy is in the upcoming election. I don't know if we'll ever talk about it for real ever. Americans do not follow politics, and this is why, once again, it is incumbent on the Trump campaign to remind Americans wow, being these people are. Nobody has ever heard of Tim Walls. They don't know that he presided over the burning down of Minneapolis. They do not understand that Tim Walls. Who the funniest thing about Ben repeating this is journalists have been replaying the, um, I think the uh, Harris campaign uh, tweeted this out. Okay, I don't know why that was cut there. Two days, three days later, I spoke to the governor. The governor's, I think, on the call, and he's an excellent guy. You've got a big national guard out there that's ready to come in and fight like hell. I tell you, the best, what they did in Minneapolis was... Incredible. They, they went in and dominated. And it happened immediately. But, Tim, it showed the incredible difference between your great state uh, yesterday and the day before compared to the first few days, which was just... Absolutely. Nope, never seen it Absolutely. A police force and take it over. And I don't blame you. I blame them. We had people chanting, mind your own business at this rally literally forced everyone to close their business in the state of Minnesota during the pandemic. Wow. He was one of the worst lockdown governors in America. Did you ever talk about Rob Zissou to bolster's arguments during yesterday's debate? Will you ever be charitable to anyone in debate if they pull out a I think, I'm, I think we're, I think I'm probably done with talking with Rob. Uh, yeah, that debate was a little bit, <laughs> that was wacky, but that's good. We got all of our mega autismo debates out of the way for this particular thing. What are these H3 snark?